Welcome to our game development tutorial series. In this video tutorial, we will explore in depth the process of understanding and implementing pathfinding using C Sharp in Unity. Our tutorial is structured into four main sections, each containing one or more subsections. The timestamp for each section is located below in the description. In the first section, we will introduce the concept of pathfinding and then proceed to develop a generic pathfinder using C Sharp. This pathfinder will be based on three well-known algorithms. In the second section, we will apply our generic pathfinder to navigate through a 2D grid, showcasing its practical application within Unity. Transitioning to the third section, we will leverage our generic pathfinder to address a graph-based pathfinding problem, again demonstrating its utility in Unity. Finally, in the fourth section, we will delve into solving the eight puzzle problem using pathfinding techniques, showcasing that pathfinding can be used not only for navigation, but also to solve a generic search-based puzzle problem. You can visit our website for the written version of this tutorial. You can also access the entire source code of this project on our GitHub repository, the link to which is provided below. In the first section, we will learn what pathfinding is and the algorithms used to solve pathfinding. We will then proceed to implement a generic pathfinder by applying the three most commonly known and popular pathfinding algorithms, namely, the A-star, the Dijkstra, and the Greedy Best First algorithms. Pathfinding involves finding the most efficient route between two points in a network, considering factors like distance, cost, or time. In game development, pathfinding refers to the technique used to determine how characters navigate the game world. It's essentially the brains behind the movement of non-playable characters in a game. It figures out the best way to get from point A to point B while considering obstacles, terrain, and other factors. Sometimes, the most efficient path for characters to move along could be the shortest, fastest, safest, or most strategic route. Pathfinding algorithms use various techniques and data structures to search through the game environment and find the optimal path. These algorithms take into account factors like the layout of the game world, the presence of obstacles, the character's movement capabilities, and any additional constraints or requirements. Solving a pathfinding problem involves finding the best route from point A to point B, considering obstacles and other constraints. A simplified explanation of the general strategy involves the following seven steps. Step 1. Identify the starting point as where you are and the destination as where you want to go. Step 2. Look at the neighboring locations around the starting point. These are the places you can immediately move to. For example, in a grid-based map, we explore the adjacent cells of the grid. Step three, calculate a score for each neighboring location. This score represents how good or bad it is to move to that location. The cost typically contains components such as cost incurred and probable cost to reach the destination. Factors like distance, obstacles, and any special rules are considered. Step 4. Select the neighboring location with the best score. This new cell has now become the new location. Step 5. We repeat steps 3 and 4 and keep exploring from the current location, evaluating options, and choosing the best one until we reach the destination or can't go any further. Step 6. If you reach a dead end or encounter obstacles, backtrack to the previous location where you had other options to explore. Step 7. Eventually, we will either reach the destination or determine that there's no path to get there. This general strategy is the basis for various pathfinding algorithms, such as A-star, Dijkstra, and breadth-first search. These algorithms differ in how they calculate scores, prioritize options, and handle obstacles, but they all follow this basic outline. Later, we will discuss the specific algorithms for pathfinding. Now, let's dive into our implementation. Our objective is to create a robust and generic pathfinder that can work in many applications. We will not consider performance optimization a criterion right now, but we will devote an entire section to optimizing the pathfinding performance. 
create a new Unity 3D project and name it Pathfinding. Rename the default scene to Rectangular Grid Pathfinding. We will use this scene as the base for creating our Pathfinder and testing it out for a grid-based problem. Right-click on the project window and create a new folder named Scripts. Now right-click and create a new c -sharp file in the Scripts folder. Name it Pathfinder. Double-click Pathfinder and open the file in Visual Studio or your favorite editor. Remove mono behavior, then remove the start and update methods. We want our class to be plain C sharp class and not derived from mono behavior. We start by adding an enumerator type called Pathfinder status. This enum defines the different states that the Pathfinder can be in during its operation. The first state is not underscore initialized. This status indicates that the Pathfinder has not been initialized yet. Initialization typically involves setting up the start and goal nodes for the Pathfinding operation and preparing any necessary data structures. When the Pathfinder is in this state, it's not ready to start searching for a path. The next state is success. This state indicates that the Pathfinder has successfully found a path from the start node to the goal node. It means that the pathfinding algorithm has completed its task and identified a valid path that meets the specified criteria. We then add the state failure. This state indicates that the Pathfinder has been unable to find a valid path from the start node to the goal node. It could occur due to various reasons, such as an unreachable destination, blocked paths, or limitations of the Pathfinding algorithm. Finally, we add the state running. This state indicates that the Pathfinder is currently searching for a path. We then define an abstract class called Node. Making it abstract means we can't create instances of Node directly. Instead, it serves as a blueprint for other classes. Also, it uses a generic type T, which means it can work with any type of data, making it really flexible. We can create nodes to hold different kinds of information. Then we have a property called Value. This property is where we store the actual data that the node represents. The get allows us to read the value. The set is marked as private, meaning we can only set the value within this class itself, not from outside. We then define the constructor for our node class. It takes a parameter value of type T, which we then use to set it to the value property. And finally, we have a method called getNeighbors. It is marked as abstract, which means any class that inherits from Node will have to implement this method. This method is responsible for finding all the neighboring nodes connected to this node. But because it's abstract, we don't provide an implementation here. Instead, each subclass of Node will define its logic for finding neighbors. Depending on how we represent map data, either as a grid or as a graph, we will have a specific implementation of this method. We now create a class named Pathfinder. It is marked as abstract, just like the Node class we saw earlier. That means we can't directly create an instance of Pathfinder. Instead, it's meant to be used as a blueprint for other classes that will perform pathfinding algorithms. We use a region to organize our code visually. Think of them as section dividers. First, we define some delegates. Delegates are like function pointers in C++. They're used here to define the signature for calculating costs between nodes. We have two types of costs, heuristic cost, which estimates the cost from a node to the goal, and node traversal cost, which calculates the cost between two neighboring nodes. After that, we end the region. We then start with another region and define a nested class called Pathfinder node. Nested classes are classes defined within another class. We have implemented this class as a nested class here as it will mostly be used by our Pathfinder class. The class implements the iComparable interface, which means instances of this class can be compared to each other. This class is crucial because it represents nodes within the search tree generated by the pathfinding algorithm. Unlike the node class we saw earlier, which was abstract and served as a template for various types of nodes, this class encapsulates a specific node in the search process. Inside the class, we define various properties and methods that will help us manage these nodes during the search process. We start with the property named parent. This property represents the parent node of the current node in the search tree. In other words, it points to the node from which the current node was reached. We then add a property called location, which represents the actual node that this Pathfinder node is associated with. 
It stores the reference to the node in the graph. We then add a few new properties that represent different costs associated with the node. G cost is the cost from the start node to this node, H cost is the heuristic cost from this node to the destination node, and F cost is the total cost of reaching this node, which is the sum of G cost and H cost. After that, we add a constructor for this class. This constructor initializes a Pathfinder node with the given node as its location, the provided parent node, and the specified G cost and H cost. It then calls the set G cost method to set the G cost and update the F cost accordingly. Then we implement the set G cost method. This method updates the node's G cost and recalculates the F cost based on the new G cost and the existing H cost. We will now implement the iComparable interface. This method allows instances of Pathfinder node to be compared based on their F cost. It returns a negative value if the current node's F cost is less than the other node's F cost, zero if they are equal, and a positive value if it's greater. We finish off by calling the end region, and that wraps up the Pathfinder node class. We will now continue with the Pathfinder class by defining another region called properties. Remember that putting sections of code between a region is just a way to organize our code visually, making it easier to understand and navigate. Then we will define a property called status. This property represents the current status of the pathfinder. It can have values like not underscore initialized, running, success, or failure. By default, it's set to not underscore initialized. The get accessor allows us to read the value of status, while the private set accessor means that only methods within this class can change the value of status. After that, we define properties for the start and goal nodes of the Pathfinder. These properties allow us to access the start and goal nodes from outside the class, but they can only be set internally, hence the private set modifier. This encapsulation ensures that only the Pathfinder class can modify these nodes. Lastly, we add another property called current node, which represents the current node that the Pathfinder is exploring. This property allows external classes to access the current node, but it can only be set internally by the Pathfinder class. We end this section of code by adding the end region. We start once again with a region to organize our code. To manage the open and closed lists in the pathfinding algorithm, we will define two lists, open list and closed list. Open list will keep track of nodes that have been discovered but not yet explored, while closed list will store nodes that have already been explored. We will then create a helper method called getLeastCostNode. This method will take a list of Pathfinder node instances as input and return the node with the lowest F cost. It will iterate through the list, comparing the F cost of each node and keep track of the index of the node with the lowest cost. We will also define another helper method called isInList. This method will check if a specific value of type T is present in the list of Pathfinder node instances. It will iterate through the list and compare the value of each node's location with the given value cell. If a match is found, it will return the index of the item in the list, otherwise it will return minus 1. After that, we end the region. We will now define another region titled Delegates for Action Callbacks, where we will declare delegates to handle changes to internal values. The game will utilize these delegates to represent alterations to the cells and lists visually. These delegates will facilitate triggering specific actions or behaviors in response to various events during the pathfinding process, allowing for visual representation and interaction within the game environment. We start by declaring a delegate type delegate pathfinder node intended to handle methods that take a pathfinder node as a parameter. Following this, we declare instances of the delegate pathfinder node delegate type, called the onChange current node, on add to open list, on add to close list, and on destination found. These delegates will be assigned methods that take a pathfinder node as a parameter and will be invoked when certain events occur.
such as changes to the current node, addition of a node to the open list, addition of a node to the closed list, and discovery of the destination node. Next, we define another delegate type, delegate no argument, which will handle methods with no parameters. We proceed by creating instances of the delegate no argument delegate type called on started, on running, on failure, and on success. These delegates will be assigned methods with no parameters. They will be invoked when certain events occur, such as the start of the pathfinding algorithm, when the algorithm is running, when the algorithm fails to find a path, and when the algorithm successfully finds a path. Finally, we end the region. Next, we will define a method called reset, which will reset the internal variables for a new search. Within the method, we will first check if the status of the pathfinder is set to running. If it is, we will not perform the reset and simply return from the method. Next, if the pathfinder is not currently running, we will set the current node to null, clear both the open and closed lists, open list and closed list, and reset the status of the pathfinder to not initialized. This reset method will ensure that the pathfinder is ready for a new search by clearing all previous data and resetting its status. It's an essential step before starting a new pathfinding operation. We will now define a method named step, which will handle the progression of the pathfinding algorithm until it either succeeds or fails. Within this method, we'll begin by adding the current node to the closed list. Next, we'll check if the open list is empty. If it is, we'll set the status to failure, invoke the onFailure delegate if it's not null, and return the status. Then, we'll get the least costly element from the open list and make it the new current node. After that, we'll remove the current node from the open list. Now, we'll check if the current node contains the goal cell. If it does, we'll set the status to success, invoke the onDestinationFound delegate if it's not null, invoke the onSuccess delegate, and return the status. Following that, we'll find the neighbors of the current node and traverse each of these neighbors for possible expansion. Within each iteration of the loop, the method algorithm specific implementation is called with the current neighbor node cell as an input parameter. This method is abstract and must be implemented by subclasses of the Pathfinder. It's meant to handle specific implementation details or operations related to the pathfinding algorithm, such as evaluating the cost of moving to the neighbor or updating the path based on the neighbor's properties. Lastly, we'll set the status to running, invoke the onRunning delegate if it's not null, and return the status. Finally, we define the abstract method algorithm specific implementation that is not directly implemented here. This method is expected to be implemented by subclasses and will handle specific implementations required by the pathfinding algorithm. We will now define a method called initialize, which will initialize a new search in the pathfinding algorithm. First, we'll check if the status of the pathfinder is set to running. If it is, we'll return false because pathfinding is already in progress. Next, we'll reset the variables to prepare for the new search operation. Then, we'll set the start and goal nodes for the search. After that, we'll calculate the heuristic cost for the start node using the provided heuristic function heuristic cost. Now, we'll create a root node with its parent as null and initialize its g-cost to zero and h-cost to the calculated heuristic cost.
Subsequently, we will add this root node to the open list, and then we will set the current node to the root node. Then, we'll invoke delegates to inform the caller if they are not null. This includes the onChange current node delegate to notify of the change in the current node, and the onStarted delegate to signify the start of the pathfinding operation. Finally, we will set the status of the Pathfinder to running and return true to indicate successful initialization of the search operation. We then bound these three methods within a region for better code organization and clarity. We have now implemented the basic structure of the Pathfinder. However, it is not yet able to do the path findings, as we have not implemented any algorithm-specific implementation. We shall now proceed to implement the three well-known types of algorithms for pathfinding. We will start with the first algorithm, known as the Dijkstra's algorithm. Dijkstra's algorithm explores paths uniformly, considering all neighboring nodes without any heuristic guidance towards the goal. It guarantees finding the shortest path, but it can be computationally expensive, especially in large graphs. Since Dijkstra's algorithm does not use any heuristic function and relies solely on the accumulated cost from the start node to each node being considered, the H cost is always zero. We start by defining a subclass of Pathfinder called Dijkstra Pathfinder, which implements Dijkstra's algorithm for pathfinding. Within the Dijkstra Pathfinder class, we will implement the abstract method algorithm specific implementation. It is an override of a method in the superclass. This method is responsible for implementing the specific logic of Dijkstra's algorithm for each cell. In this method, we check if the current cell is not in the closed list, meaning it has not been visited yet. Next, we calculate the tentative cost, G cost, to reach the current cell from the starting node. Since this is Dijkstra's algorithm, we don't consider the heuristic cost or the H cost. Then, we check if the cell is already in the open list. If not, we add it to the open list with the calculated costs. If the cell is already in the open list, we check if the newly calculated cost is less than the existing cost for that cell in the open list. If it is, we update the cost and parent of the cell in the open list. This process ensures that Dijkstra's algorithm explores nodes based on their distance from the start node, updating costs as it discovers shorter paths. Next, we will implement the A star algorithm. The A star algorithm uses a heuristic function to guide the search towards the goal, prioritizing paths that are more likely to lead to the goal. It combines the cost to reach a node from the start, which is the G cost, and an estimated cost to reach the goal from that node, which is the H cost. A star is generally more efficient than Dijkstra's algorithm because it tends to explore fewer nodes while still guaranteeing an optimal solution if an admissible heuristic is used. The A star algorithm performance heavily depends on the quality of the heuristic function. In the worst case, A star may behave similarly to Dijkstra's algorithm, but with a good heuristic, A star can significantly reduce the search space and achieve better performance. We continue by defining a subclass of Pathfinder called A star Pathfinder, which implements the A star algorithm for pathfinding. Within the A star Pathfinder class, we implement the algorithm specific implementation function. In this method, we first check if the current cell is not in the closed list, meaning it has not been visited yet. Next, we calculate the cost to reach the current cell from the start node. This is the cost of the path from the start node to the current cell. We also calculate the heuristic cost, or H cost, from the current cell to the goal node. Then, we check if the cell is already in the open list. If not, we add it to the open list with the calculated costs.
If the cell is already in the open list, we check if the newly calculated cost, the G cost, is less than the existing cost for that cell in the open list. If it is, we update the cost and the parent of the cell in the open list. This process ensures that the A star algorithm explores nodes based on their combined cost, which is G plus H, where G is the actual cost from the start node, and H is the heuristic estimate of the cost to the goal node. Next, we will implement our final algorithm for pathfinding, called the Greedy Best First Search Algorithm. Greedy Best First Search is an uninformed search algorithm that explores a graph by prioritizing nodes based on their heuristic value. It selects the node that appears to be closest to the goal according to a heuristic function without considering the actual cost of reaching that node from the start. In contrast to the Dijkstra algorithm, the Greedy Best First Search algorithm does not use the cost to reach a node from the start. Instead, it purely relies on the heuristic cost to the goal node. Greedy Best First search is fast and can quickly find a solution if the heuristic function is well designed. However, it does not guarantee optimality, meaning it may not always find the shortest path to the goal. Due to its greedy nature, it can get stuck in local optima or loops, especially if the heuristic function overestimates the actual cost to reach the goal. Therefore, while greedy best first search is efficient, it may not always produce the most optimal solution. We can copy and paste the Dijkstra Pathfinder, change the name of the class to Greedy Pathfinder. Then we set the G cost to be zero and H cost as the calculated heuristic cost. The remaining functionality remains unchanged. This process ensures that the Greedy Best First Search algorithm explores nodes based solely on their heuristic values without considering the actual cost from the start node. We have completed implementing the first section, develop a generic pathfinder in c -sharp by applying pathfinding algorithms. In the next section, we will apply the different pathfinders to solve the pathfinding problems on a grid-based map.